Sup, heathens? I'm Funky Monkey. Welcome to my house of love. Like many nerds, I love science fiction and fantasy. The normal world can be a dull and uncooperative sort of place. And it's always better to have somewhere to escape to. Which brings me to today's topic, heavy metal. Did I hear someone say heavy metal? Why, it's the happy viking. Are you well, sir? Oh, I am very good, oh monk of funk, and since you are doing something in my territory, shall we do this? Oh, indeed we shall, sir. After that dalliance with Miss Ursa last week, I'm feeling in quite the crossover -y mood. Let us introduce our audience to this cinematic compendium. <laughs> I'll handle this. Released in 1981, Heavy Metal is a series of tales loosely linked together by a common plot element, the Loch Nahr Orb and its destructive properties. Featuring the writings of Dan O'Bannon and some sweet tracks by Sabbath, Nazareth, Cheap Trick and many others, it's one animated movie you will never forget. So fasten your seatbelts cause we're taking a ride on Heavy Metal. Our first segment, intercut with the opening credits, shows an astronaut coming home to his daughter. What did you bring me? You'll see. But oh dear. Ooh! Nasty. Uh, what now? Ooh, nasty. It's, uh, from an old TV kids show, Nightmare. And bam, we plunge straight into our first story, Harry Canyon. A noted professor finds the Loch Nahr on a faraway planet and brings it to Earth. But powerful men want the Loch Nahr for themselves. Father! This is where Harry Canyon, New York cab driver, comes in. Please. Normally my rules don't get involved, but somehow, hey, this thing got to me. But the police are no help. Pal, I gotta tell you, it's cash up front. Thanks for nothing. Back at Harry's place, the professor's daughter reveals all. All around us. When we got to New York, my father hid it. In more ways than one. Sucker player, not. I must have turned around something fierce. Cause this dame was going for broke. Or maybe it was her first time with a New Yorker, I don't know. Ooh, sexy times. The next morning, Canyon is approached by this pile of meat who wants to buy the Loch Nahr. My name is Ratnik. And then he gets the message to meet the girl at the Statue of Liberty. I want to get rid of it, Harry. I want this to be over. I'll come along for 50% of the take. So the switch is made. But the dame pulls a gun. Bad move. Damn shame. I would... so bad. You and me both, Mr. Viking. Anyway, on to our next tale. Den. So this kid is Den. He finds the Loch Nahr Orb, picks it up, and then just forgets about it. Until a storm one night, that is, and bam, transported across the universe. And just in time, too, as a girl is being sacrificed to raise a horrible monster. Oh, the number of girls that have sacrificed themselves to raise my monster, let me tell ya. Den dives in after her and carries her to safety. You saved my life. And of course, she is very grateful. If any part of me... But as is always the way, when you get in the mood, company shows up. And so, Den and Catherine are taken to meet the other power in this world. Our hero plays it tough. Give me the girl or die. Well, if I have a choice, I'll take death. So be it. But Catherine has already been put under. She's dead. And so, Den is convinced to steal the sacred Loch Nahr. He and a small band of rebels find their way into the palace and into the Queen's chamber. Wow. 
But our hairless hero is dragged off to pleasure the queen, and another sex scene ensues. Mm. Postcoital bliss is short-lived, though, as Den slips over the side after his deception is revealed. Den rides back and saves Catherine again, while Queenie and... <laughs> Queenie... Fight it out for the Loch Nahr. Stupid bitch, get away from me! Not that it does not much good, however, when Den sends him Grace knows where, and rides off with the girl into a majestic sunset. I'm Den. That was quite a good tale. I very much enjoyed that. So tell me, what's next? The next story is Captain Stern. Meet Captain Lincoln F. Stern. He's on trial for many terrible crimes and his defense attorney's nerves are frayed. I'm guilty. Are you nuts? It's okay, Charlie. I got an angle. And that angle is Hanover Fist. I promised him 35,000 Zulex to testify on my behalf. But oh dear. Anything illegal. Uh... Unless you count all the times he sold dope disguised as a nun. Hanging's too good for him. Burning's too good for him. He should be torn into little bits and pieces and buried alive. Head over. Stern takes the opportunity to escape, but Fist pursues. <laughs> but shock! It was all an act. For thirty-five thousand Zulex. Thanks, Hanover. Not that it does fist much good. Next up, B-17. A World War II bomber plane gets shot up. The co-pilot goes to investigate, and guess what he finds? No, not that. Jeez. The Loch Nahr has turned all of his fallen comrades into skeletal revenants, and when they come for him, he does the smart thing and hits the silk. <clears throat> I'll feel this one, but... Oh, dear. Ugh, not the end I'd wish for. Let's turn our attention now to Light Affair, and a little tale called So Beautiful and So Dangerous. Something that could be said of the Loch Nahr itself. We begin as a scientist delivers his findings to a Pentagon Council. Hell, my constituents are turning green! But what's that the secretary's wearing? Pretty. Pretty. Dr. Anrak is not what he appears to be, and as an alien ship hovers above the Pentagon, the machine is retrieved. Along with the secretary. Hey, who's the chick? Molecular, uh, molecular instability zone around the spacecraft. You cannot leave. What? Is he kidding? Uh, oh yeah, instability zone, you're stuck here. Ha, <laughs> stoner aliens, great times, man. So yeah, so long Earth. Total stoner spaceflight sequence. Sexy times with a big-eared robot. That was incredible. I've never felt anything like it. Oh, great. I've been programmed to be fully proficient in sexual activities. Docking with Mothership. <laughs> oh, wow. And finally... The moment you've all been waiting for, Tana. 
Take it away, Mr. Viking. Hoo <laughs> with pleasure. The Loch Nahr lands in a volcano, and some dudes go check it out. But then, they get mutated. And conquer the world. The last members of the Human Council summon Tana, last surviving descendant of Tarak, the Defender. After a distinctly fanservice-y dressing for battle montage, to defend, this is the pact. Tana visits a saloon. But it isn't long before Trouble finds her. The bartender directs our heroine to the enemy stronghold. You'll find them over there, beyond the oasis. Towards the green glow. Not that it does her much good, however, since they capture her almost immediately. to die in a hole, her bird thing gets free and comes to her rescue. The reunion is cut short though when a mutant pierces the bird thing's neck. The mutant leader swoops in and battle commences. Long story short, Tana wins. So it's time for one last ride. One sparkly sacrifice later and Mr. Loch Nahr goes bye-bye. And so, our movie ends with the astronaut's daughter fulfilling her destiny as the next Tarakian defender. defender. And the power of evil is contained for another generation. And in so that was heavy metal. And yes, it is a midnight classic. But I don't think I can put this one into the house of love. Ah. Uh. Oh no, no, hear me out, hear me out. This is not a family film. It's brimming with gore, boobs, and nudity. Not to mention that the anthology nature leaves it inherently disjointed, the Loch Nahr framing device being the most tenuous of links, especially in the penultimate segment. True enough, true enough. But the point of the movie is not to tell a poignant, timeless story, but to entertain the older gent with a mad, cackling abandon. It's uneven, sure, but that's only because they needed to make room for more fun. It's pulpy, cheesy, and schlocky, and I love it all the same. And it is definitely one hell of a ride. Damn skippy. If you're old enough, I recommend you check it out. Just be wary of the sequel. So thanks for watching. And special thanks to the Happy Viking for joining me on this adventure. No problem, dude. I'm Happy Viking, and you've just had your recommended dosage of heavy metal-related entertainment. So rock on, and drink responsibly. And all that remains to me to say is, join me next week for more fun and frolics. So long, folks. <laughs>